Are your family holiday gatherings explosive like war zones? If so, the Netflix original movie Mosul might be the perfect fit. It releases on Thanksgiving Day. When ISIS, or Daesh as they're called in Mosul, takes over the city, the families, and all of the homes, one militant police group fights to take it all back. An inexperienced Iraqi cop, Kawa, was rescued after a harrowing firefight by the elite Nineveh SWAT team. They're under constant threat of attack as they're going about their guerrilla mission to really th free the city and liberate it, all its people. And Kawa is taken under the wing. He's taken into this rogue group by the leader, Jossam. This is based on a true story and it is an adventure ride. From just about the very get-go, this is filled with anxiety and dread. I mean, we open with a shot flying over the city, or really what's left of the city, because it is mainly rubble. And it just sets the tone for everything that we're about to see, that we are going into a place of absolute destruction, where mayhem has just run rampant. And now you have this, this small group of fighters trying to take back the city that they love. There's an absolute intensity to this, because you get the sense that they are always always having to look over their shoulder because of all the rubble, of all just the, the destruction that has happened. I mean, anybody could be hiding anywhere, and that's what they do. I love how we watch the transformation of Kawa go from rookie police officer to seasoned warrior all in a day. Nice to know that seems a little bit far-fetched, but that is because of war and battle and everything that he has put through. And it's not just saying that. I mean, we actually physically watch his transformation as well. I mean, he starts out in the cop uniform, and then when he goes into the SWAT team, they change out his uniform so that they match him, and he slowly becomes a soldier. And at one point, he is donning this net gaiter that has a skull on it, and that solidifies, truly, his transformation into this killer. I also love the constant air of suspicion that surrounds Kawa, because he is a nobody. He's an unknown to this tight-knit group of people. And so when he asks questions or he's trying to figure out what's going on to the other people, this seems odd. It seems off. Like he is asking way too much information, and so it sets all of them just at, at ill at ease. And I love just that, that play that comes into that because now he, I don't know as the audience member, can I trust him? I mean, is he just legitimately asking these questions or is he really an ISIS member who is trying to now, well, I mean, he's infiltrated it just by being asked to be in there. The action is crazy in this and the drama is so intense. I mean, when there are firefights, we are put right into the middle of it. And I love also that they we then get to see the action from a whole bunch of different angles. Like we're not just set right in the middle. I mean, a lot of it is we're right there, right behind the gun as it's firing. We see the bullets ricocheting off and hitting things. But also then we get to zoom out and we get to see the scope and the terror of everything that's going on and where just the treachery could come from. Now, the mission that the team is on, I mean, we understand that they're trying to liberate their city, but it feels a little bit vague in more of the finer points. We know that they do have a goal. They're, it seems like they're going to a specific spot, but they don't really talk about it. And so as they're going along, what happens to them or what they do just does feel a little bit random. I mean, at one point they even discover an enemy base. And so that becomes kind of their target and their focus, which I think makes sense because if you were going along and you were sweeping the city, trying to get rid of all of these Daesh members who are just, I mean, they're terrorizing truly the, your hometown, that you would then want to target that. But it didn't seem like that was the thing that they were necessarily going for. So it was kind of happenstance that they came across this and, oh, okay, well, this now becomes our goal. But towards the end of the film, we do get a much clearer picture of what one of their absolute goals were. And it's touching and it's heartbreaking all at the same time. I really like how Jossam is the father figure to the group. I mean, he is wise, he is confident, he's calm, but oh man, he is fierce too. You can really see his care and concern that he leads the group, and it's certainly visible, especially as he leads and guides and really takes Kawa under his wing. The movie takes place in one day, and it is crazy the amount of obstacles that the team has to overcome. I mean, it is harrowing and just anxiety-ridden. There's a very tense scene where Jossam is bartering and negotiating with an Iraqi soldier, and I mean, the emotions are on high alert. The climax, though, to that scene is abrupt, and I love how it leaves our characters. The landscapes are wonderfully captured. Like I said, I mean, there is destruction everywhere, and you can just see, I mean, it is absolute carnage, and you know that 
when this fight is over, when Daesh has finally been eradicated from the city, it is going to be a long time of rebuilding. It's crazy to think that parts of the city in this state are still inhabited. I mean, it makes everything treacherous too, because anybody could be hiding anywhere and nothing is easily attained. This is a great tribute to those soldiers who fought to take their city back. This is also the directorial debut of Matthew Carnahan, and I think he did a great job of just capturing how harrowing and how terrifying a lot of this place is and or was, but also he creates an environment that is very engaging. I mean, I was sucked in to the characters, to the landscape, to the action, everything that is going on. I mean, I became so engaged with the characters that I really did care for their outcome, even though most of them I don't know anything about. This is 101 minutes of thrilling action. Now, I watch it with subtitles because I don't really like the dubbed versions, but there were points in this where there weren't any subtitles and dialogue was happening. Now, I don't know if that's to keep me in the dark or if it's supposed to be kind of inaudible just talking and it's not necessarily important, but I didn't get the sense that it wasn't important. I felt that it probably was, that they were saying something or something was being said over the radio that would give me more context to what is going on in that scene, and I felt like I was missing out. While this may not be your ideal Thanksgiving viewing entertainment, it is certainly something to check out. There is no sex, maybe brief nudity, a bunch of profanity, and a whole lot of bloody and graphic violence. I give Mosul four and a half out of five couches. What do you typically watch on Thanksgiving besides the mashed potatoes and gravy disappear? I'd love to know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for catching with me.